Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome into the pod at the Palace, a Friday edition. Curtis Wilkerson and Scotty Borderline with Natty State Sports here from uh, the studios in downtown Fayetteville. Uh, we do have some basketball to talk about. Mm-hmm. I, I know everybody thought that the season ended uh, when Arkansas lost to Vanderbilt earlier in the week. I kind of... I can't really argue against <laughs> that. I, I kind of <laughs> get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I understand. Uh, but maybe, just maybe, um, we can talk ourselves uh, and the world out there into why watching uh, Arkansas versus Kentucky this weekend Maybe. is worth it because we're going to do it. Well, we have to. It's our job, but we are going to be yeah. live streaming the game. We hope a lot of people join us, so maybe we can talk some folks into it. Um, I have a I have a, a few reasons why, um, but I'm curious to hear from you first, like because I I know yesterday you were taking some time to to write about you know this game coming up, and uh, I I applaud you for that. It took me a while. <laughs> it might have been a, a challenging. <laughs> Uh, endeavor on your part, but you got through it. Wasn't and I read the, the story and I thought the, it was great. Wasn't the most fun thing I've done, and we <laughs> talked about it a lot while I was writing. And I, was, I said, Curtis, I think I'm done with this, but it feels incomplete. Like I just, <laughs> yeah. you know, I think that's kind of where I am in terms of writing about this team. We're still going to keep doing it. Um, if you're if you're an Arkansas fan and you're out on this team, I will say this: watch the game because Kentucky is one of the most fun teams in the country. They score a lot. Sold. They give up a lot of points most nights. Um, it's par- it's probably one of the most talented teams, if not the most talented team, you know, man for man in the country. Um, they're just – like when we were down in Arlington, we made sure that we were in front of that TV to watch Kentucky true, play man. Alabama um, because we knew there was it was going to be like an NBA, an NBA-type game scoring-wise. Um, Dude, they almost scored twice as many points on Alabama as they did against Arkansas in the first yeah, game. Yeah, that was yeah. crazy. They may they may have scored close to as many points against Arkansas as they did in the first half against Alabama. Ooh, yeah. I think I think it was sixty three and sixty one, maybe. Yes, yeah, I think Dude, you're right. That's yeah. yeah wow, that was wild. Okay. Um, <laughs> Bama don't play defense. No, no, um, they don't. <laughs> but if you're not, look, I get it that there's probably like not many Arkansas fans who aren't out on this team. But if you're not, um, Eric Musselman is 2-0 and in Rupp Arena. He is. Listen, the first time that he won there, COVID, COVID crowd, and so it wasn't, wasn't packed out a couple years ago, or I guess it was last season. Yeah, feels like a decade ago. It but does yeah. feel like a decade ago. <laughs> My goodness. Um, went in there and won again. There's no Anthony Black on this team, but there is a Caleb Battle. That's you know putting up really 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 impressive offensive numbers if you throw turnovers away yeah uh, against Vanderbilt so new month see see what KB can do because there's going to be a lot of like high level if you like offense this might be the game for you yeah because KB uh, KB is on a roll scoring at a really high level being super aggressive he's being a free throw merchant getting to the line all the time. And then Kentucky's just got a bunch of dudes. Like they're, they're probably going to have several guys drafted off of this team. Um, so that would be that's my case. And like Kentucky's the best three point shooting team in the country by percentage. Uh, Arkansas in the last six games has held its opponents to like twenty six point seven percent from three on over a hundred attempts. So that's going to be interesting to track. Uh, other than that, I don't know. I don't know why you'd watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, it, it's interesting because I, I wrote down several bullet points, and one of them was, well, Kentucky's really exciting to watch, and another yeah. one was Caleb Battle's still good. Yeah. Uh, so we're on the same wavelength, uh, wavelength with a lot of that. And then, you know, uh, there is some, like, nostalgia and just historic reasons why Arkansas-Kentucky is always fun, yeah. uh, no matter how good the two teams are. Uh, it was a really good game earlier in the season. So, yeah, for sure. you know. Uh, maybe Kentucky didn't play their best. I, obviously, I don't think they did, but you know, there's something to be start, said for what that. Did they start in that game shooting. Was it? Oh God! I uh, feel like it was one for fifteen or one for seventeen. Yeah, something it was. Like that. It, was it was rough, was man. Bad. Yeah, it was rough for them. Somehow they still wound up winning that game, um, but they've been without Trey Mitchell for a while. Yeah, and so that that hurts them a and little bit with their Arkansas depth. Because yeah, he killed Arkansas, and then Arkansas. You know, we'll talk about it in a minute and whether or not it's a good thing. But you know, TB's back. Uh, Jalen Graham sounds like he's going to be available. So maybe, you know, um, Arkansas can find something there. 
A CBS game, that's yeah, fun. That was the only other thing I was going to say. Yeah. It just, when the game's on CBS, it feels In a little Rob, bit different. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. And I think, you know, everyone hates John Calipari. Yeah. So we can all, you know, unite together from that front and For enjoy sure. this game a little bit. Uh, embrace the role of a, of a spoiler because, Absolutely. you know, Kentucky's right now, they're actually outside of that top four for the double buy in Nashville. They're playing for seeding for the NCAA tournament. And, uh, you know, like they even despite what's been a pretty good year, they've kind of fallen a little bit short of expectations themselves. And people were, you know, heating Calipari up for them losing at home. And yeah. you, you lose, you take a quad four to Arkansas and uh buddy, things will get, <laughs> things will get dicey there. Yes. That's what I was going to say. Like this team, it's, it's, it's surprising to me that they're sitting at 10 and five in the yeah. league because they're a team that is talented enough to be like whatever in one or whatever in two. Sure. Um, but yeah, they haven't held serve at home great this year. Like they definitely got up for that Alabama game. Yeah, they were weekend. they were ready for that one. But it's a team that's lost to UNC Wilmington at home, um, lost to Florida at home, Tennessee at home, Gonzaga at home. So it's not like you're like one of those teams is not like the other. But this Kentucky team just doesn't seem to play like it like most do in Rupp Arena. Right. And I don't understand why. And Calipari's even gone as far to say, like, this team is more connected, more together, plays better on the road. So mm -hmm. um, Arkansas is just – Arkansas has got to take some of the things that it did in that first game in Bud but execute better in some very key areas. Right. Um, but they've also got to take in – like, Arkansas's the two teams that have won in Rupp under Eric, tough, mm -hmm. gritty. Um what were the other two things that he said? Like, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they've they've got to carry some of those characteristics into Rupp or you've got no shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. No uh, shot. 100% uh, agreed with that. And, you know, uh, I, I think the last part of my argument for, for watching this game is, hey, it's, again, like, yeah, CBS, but it's also a Saturday. It's a 1230. That's a great tip for yeah. this Arkansas team get it over with right? <laughs> and then you can you can go do something with your night yeah. maybe uh but no I, I think it's a it's a perfect time we're going to be live streaming it we want people to join in with us and uh listen sometimes it's uh it's exciting and electric and funny and sometimes it's a therapy session that and yeah. everybody can just vent and get in the chat and it's a good time um but it's also somehow scotty some way arkansas lost to vanderbilt this weekend or, or earlier in the week, and they're still in position to get out of Wednesday sadness. I don't understand. I don't understand how they did it because they <laughs> it, it was almost like that was a must win. Yeah. Uh, but what helps is uh, Georgia took an L, and so you stayed uh, tied with them in the standings, and Texas A&M lost again, and you're a game behind them, but you have the tiebreaker because you swept them. So. Right. You have every opportunity still to get out of that, and I know it's I, I know it's pathetic. I get it. Okay, that, they call it Wednesday sadness for a reason because you don't want to sure. be there, yeah. right? and that's just where we're at, people. <laughs> Nobody we're, wants to be there. We're, we're spitting facts. <laughs> this is reality. Okay, uh, but they've got a chance to get out of there. They're they're currently tied in eleventh place with uh, with Georgia. They're a game behind Texas A and M and Ole Miss. I don't think they're gonna I don't think they're gonna pass Ole Miss because to do that they're effectively two games behind them because you could tie them. But Ole Miss has the tiebreaker, right? As of right now, so well, period, because you only played them once. So A uh, and M and Georgia are really the teams to watch. LSU's two games ahead of you; like they could lose out, but their schedule is easy. So I kind of took them off the list. Um, but you know, you have an opportunity. Like you would, you would need to pass Georgia outright right now because they hold the tiebreaker. It's the deal where if you split a, a two-game series in the regular season, it goes to like who then has the best win. From there via the standings, and Georgia beat South Carolina. Pretty good. And win. so Arkansas's best win right now in the league is over Texas A and M. So I mean that could change. Like if Arkansas beats Kentucky, maybe uh, who's well, South Carolina is actually ahead of them right now, but that could yeah. flip by the end of the year. Or if they beat Alabama uh, to close the season, so that could change. Right now Georgia has the tiebreaker, uh, but you could get by them. Uh, and then Texas A and M again, like you've you've you swept those guys, so you just got to pick up a game somewhere. And so if you look at the schedules the rest of the way, obviously we know that that Arkansas has uh, the trip to Rupp, then they get LSU who 20-pieced them at home, yeah, and then they go to, to Bama. So it's not easy, and that's, you know, Musk was asked about it yesterday, and he was very much like, 
We're just worried about like how do we win the next game on our schedule. Yeah. Well, we'll let him worry about that, and we'll worry about the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but Georgia, it's not going to be easy for them. They, they have home games against A and M, desperate A and M, and Ole Miss, desperate Ole Miss, uh, and then the regular season finale is at Auburn. Mm. So they're probably going to drop at least one, yeah. maybe a, maybe two or three of those. Like none of those are guarantees for them. A and M, um, obviously they travel to Georgia. That's that's a tough road game for them. They host a Mississippi State team who's very capable of of knocking them off in Reed Arena, um, and then they get Ole Miss at home. Like all these teams are playing each other, so somebody's going to lose. Like you're sure. going to be able to pick up ground on somebody if you handle your business to a degree. Yeah. So will they do that? I don't know. Who knows? Um, but yeah, this this Arkansas team and and Eric's been talking about it for a while, and we've kind of been saying it for a while. I hate the cliche one game at a time because mm. you know what. You can't play two at once. Correct. <laughs> so you have to play yeah. one at a time. That's like, right. You literally can't. Like I would, I, I would love to see somebody play two games at once. They could play the last three regular season games would, today for all I care. Yeah, that would be fine with me. <laughs> um, but yeah, two games at once or even three games at once. That I, that'd be pretty unprecedented. So I think it's it, it'd be, I think it's the wise thing to do. Is just go play Kentucky first, and then prep for LSU, and then you prep for. For Alabama, I feel like um, I've heard this before. I got, right, um, <laughs> that was so funny. And then his he must like reiterated that in the presser yesterday. And then my favorite thing was his quote at the very end, or like he, how he wrapped up the quote, where he said, "Yeah, the the games are going to come down to how the players off of each roster get out on the floor and compete against each other." <laughs> Whoa, that's a, that's a banger, bro. <laughs> <was> some heat. <laughs> I took it out of the story because I was trying to trim it a little bit. I didn't want it to be too long, and I was going through that quote, and I was like, "Man, I need to, I need to get some of this out of here. I don't know what to do." And then I read that last <laughs> sentence, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I could just oh, pull that dude, one." Yeah, I think that, that goes so without good. saying, actually. Yeah, that was great. So yeah, pretty, pretty funny stuff, man. Each game is going to take shape based on how the players on the two different rosters compete against <laughs> each other. That, what is a basketball game? <laughs> oh man. Uh, just just preaching at us with the uh, with the chalk talk there. It was a yeah. banger. I love what, it. What else? I, uh, something else that I liked was Eric on on Thursday was asked about Kentucky's offense, which just this year has been potent. It's been yeah a lot of fun to watch. They get up and down the court, shoot threes ex- incredibly well. Um, Kentucky was playing. Kentucky's offense was rolling, and that mm-hmm. was a big storyline. Kind of when Kentucky came here, Eric gets asked about Kentucky's offense again. Um, they're still really good. They still shoot the three well. Um, and and I'm not going to read this whole quote, but I, you could just kind of sense that he knows Kentucky's offense is good. And he might have been a little bit frustrated that the question wasn't about how did your defense keep this high high flying offense to ah. like their second fewest points of the year. Fair. He's like, I don't have the stats in front. I don't have the stats from when we played them before, but I can tell you they were clicking offensively then. That I promise, because we talked about transition defense. We talked about shot selection and how bad shot selection leads to their runouts. Again, I don't have the numbers, but I'm pretty sure when we played them last time, they might have even been offensively just as powerful as they are now. (laughs) I vividly remember and have our practice plan sitting on my desk and transition defense, shot selection, not turning the ball over. That leads to their easy baskets are all a big part. Well, there we go. You could like, it, I, you. I think you probably went back and listened yep. to to his availability. The way that he said, uh, "clicking," there was so much frustration in the word. Yeah, clicking right there. Like he he knows, mm-hmm. he knows, and now he's just he's got to try to get his defense to maybe try to replicate some of that. I don't want to call it magic, but they. I don't know how they held him to one of seventeen or whatever no. to open the game, but they've got to try to replicate some of well, that. Well, and they also get to uh get the Rob Dillingham experience oh, when they do. Uh, yeah, I forgot. when Kentucky goes to their bench, which they didn't get the last time. So yeah. that'll be We thought uh we thought the man John kid from Vanderbilt was uh was getting by guys off the bounce. So we'll just wait till Dillingham's in there. Dillingham's different, buddy. Yeah, he's Rob with the shifts on yeah. Twitter for a reason. Like <laughs> Rob Dillingham. <laughs> Gosh. So yeah, I mean I don't know. Uh you know it, it's kind of crazy because Arkansas had every opportunity to win that game in Bud Walton Arena. They didn't. It, it was the the last really good atmosphere that we've seen in Bud 
Yeah. Um, you know, college game day was there. They played out of their minds defensively. They were outsized, undermanned, and and you know, they just really played well. It was it was, it was a super gritty game. It was it a was. damn shame they lost, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but I just I don't know. Like I don't have really any reason to feel confident that they can replicate that on the road. I don't. And it, and it sucks, man, because they had been playing a lot better. Yeah. Uh, you know, for that three game stretch, and it's I like I don't know that Vanderbilt game just. Uh, they got me, man. I was, I'm in my feelings still over that. But I just, you know, I, I just I can't expect Kentucky to miss 19 of their first 20 shots or for whatever sure. it was. And, uh, you know, for Arkansas to compete on the glass as well as they did uh, in that game. And, you know, and then it's, it's a situation for the Razorbacks where I don't know – what it's going to take for them to uh, for them to compete and slow those guys down and, and potentially win this game, yeah. Because we don't know what to expect from the team, and it's not just the oh, are they going to play hard? Think well, who the hell knows? Like we just have no idea at this yeah. point. Are they going to look like a team that's playing for each other? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe for the first five minutes, and then not for thirty minutes, and then for the final five, they will. It's just been all up and down. But like we don't even know again at this point, like what the the lineups are going to look like and, sure. and what the identity is what the rotation is and and for the life of me I just can't figure out why they're trying to to fix what didn't seem to be broken um, and this is something that we've talked about for you know a week now since they started to get a little bit healthy with injury row and um, look man I don't know if there's a super big correlation between Trevin Brazil, you know, getting subbed into the game and then that lead evaporating and Arkansas kind of falling apart there. Um, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a, like a Trevin Brazil is a, he's not a bad teammate uh, or anything like that. But, you know, you mentioned it in the past, like it's kind of those Nick Smith vibes of you got a really talented player that you're trying to work back into the mix after he's been out for a long time and the team figured things out without him. Yeah. And you, you can't tell me there's not some level of disruption there, especially when every time we talk to Musk, he talks about how it can be problematic and mm-hmm. how it impacts the player returning and how it impacts the rest of the team, and it's complicated. I think he sees it, and I think he's struggling with how to balance it right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, I don't know what I would do if I was him because, like, again, TB, when he's when he's right, is talented. It can can help you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I asked Eric specifically on on Thursday. I was like. All right, so just like kind of shoot it straight, good and bad, from what you got from him before he fouled out the other night. And he was like, "Well, ideally, we'd like for him to not foul out." And like he didn't even play twenty minutes. No, yeah, seventeen. The other night. And so yeah. that's maybe a little bit of the um, he's got to work him back, work himself back into like game speed, game shape. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a, a figure. Some of those fouls are coming from like your feet aren't moving quick enough so you have to you know try to make up ground by reaching or grabbing or or doing something along those lines um and then there was just the the late game foul that was just kind of inexcusable yeah um but i think like when he's right again he can he can help the team but um i don't know it seems like this team figured things out when his minutes went down but it was out of necessity like Mm-hmm. Just couldn't play him because he wasn't ready. I wonder. I hope. I hope this is not just like an overreaction to a bad Kai game. Exactly. But I think. What have you been getting from Chandler Lawson lately? Nothing. Replace like zero. Replace exactly. Yeah, and so you could. I mean, he. You got more from TB in like his first game where he's like actually knocking rust off than Chandler Lawson, who's like, I think I told you the other night he he may maybe like maybe played more games than anybody on the roster this year. He's he's the only guy, along with Kai, who's played in every game. Yeah, this season. Yeah, and so you're you're his. I haven't noticed him a lot lately. Well, he's he's doing the the Connor Vanover thing, you know, like he's yeah. starting every game for continuity's sake, I guess, sure. and he's playing ten to twelve minutes and just not like he had he had he had a dunk and no rebounds yeah. in this game against Vanderbilt the other day, you know. Yeah, and I don't know if he, that he was making a bunch of defensive breakdowns or like anything like that, but there's not there's just not a lot of production there. Yeah, I um, think you stick with Kai. Yep. 
Hell, I might even start him now. Yeah, why not, man? Yeah, just just go for it. Let I him, get it with him, him being comfortable coming off the bench. Yeah. Whatever. He started all last season. Start him, and then I don't know what they do lineup-wise against Kentucky. I feel like you got to have guards out there. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to have some kind of a rim presence. I'd go with my the four guards that I've been using, so L and T-Mark and Devo and KB, Yeah, and throw Kai in there. And for me, Trevin would be – my rotation big. Yeah. Just you might you might not like playing center, dude, but that's where you're at. Because when he's the four, the defense slips. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I don't see any like Kentucky, they're they're long and athletic and but like they don't have Sheboy sure. this year. You know, it's like he's not gonna get overpowered in there and there's not gonna be a big difference in, you know, what what Brazil brings at the five versus Makai defensively, honestly, at this point. So uh I that's what I do. I I don't I just I'm very Weary of the, let's go two bigs, you know, with with Trevin and Kai or Jalen Graham and Trevin or what I just I don't I've, yeah. I've seen that so much yeah. and the defense was so bad during that time I just can't I can't handle it. Yeah, I I think I'm with you. Um, I was interested to hear Eric on Thursday talk about how down the stretch they're probably going to put out some more traditional. I know. Looking lineups, and he was like, hey, does that mean that at a certain point in a game we're going to put four guards out there with one big for matchup sake? Like, absolutely not. Like, he's probably still going to do that. Mm -hmm. I would think quite a bit because, like, this Kentucky matchup is one that you feel like you you need guards out there. Yeah. You really need guards out there. <laughs> like, um, Kentucky's guards are just – they're different, buddy. They are. Um so I would I would think that they'll play. I think they'll start four guards again, and I'm I'm for starting Kai. Like you just get your get your five best dudes out there, right? Just get your five best dudes out there. And when Kai needs a blow, that's when you try to figure it out. And then maybe you throw Trev, maybe you throw TB in there, figure out that it's not working. Try somebody else or put Kai back in the game. And then he get he needs another breather. Maybe you try JG at that point. Right. See if that shoulder holds up. See if um. You know he doesn't stand out in a negative way defensively mm -hmm. because you're going to need to score points. I would imagine in yeah. this game, 57 is not going to keep you in it this time. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, so you might just need you, you need scoring, obviously. Um, and I think Jalen Graham on the interior, like he's your best scoring big. Like even though uh, Kai's been on a roll of late, you know where he's scoring the ball pretty well, but he's also like the other night just flat out disappeared and you're wondering like you wonder how that happens mm -hmm. um i don't know man i don't envy eric yeah at all. Like i don't trying either. to figure out what to do in the front court you know you need guards but you've now got four bigs that you feel like you can play but you know how to play them when to play them who to start all that stuff i don't envy them at all and then on top of that you know you need guards <laughs> and it's still not as simple as you think it is because <laughs> Tremont Mark, he just does not appear to be right to me at all yep, right I now. Feel that. Um, and I don't know what it is. Maybe it, it could very easily just be he was one of the guys who was under the weather and sick or something because he's looked a little lethargic out there at times. I think sometimes we might look at T Mark and, and question like body language a little bit. But I also I think some of it's his demeanor. He's just a yeah. kind of a quiet, unassuming guy. Yeah. Um, and I, I wonder if, if some of it's that. Uh, but we've seen a lot of like air balls, shots coming up short. It makes you wonder about that shoulder. Yeah, that's, but that's then where I go immediately. But then he'll pop a three, and you're like, wow, that looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but clearly I think he's not operating at 100% right now. So you have to have some concern about that. And then against Vanderbilt – Devo plays 13 minutes and just uh, he didn't play the last 17 minutes of the second half. And I'm not like my feelings aren't hurt over that because he wasn't really doing a whole lot while he was in there. Uh, but coming off that game where he, you know, flirted with the triple double and, you know, kind of looked like he had really maybe, you know, found what his role needs to be with this team. Uh, you barely have him out there. And then, you know, you're going to have ups and downs with L that just comes with the territory. Yeah. Uh, can, can we continue to count on KB to give you 40 a night? I like at some point he might drop down to 25. Yeah. So I, yeah, man. And, and then Davenport is the, uh, the best bad shooter in the country. 
And so I just don't who blocker. Has, who, who knows? Has to sometimes play the four and doesn't block out. Yeah, exactly. Big on free throws. And yeah. so it's you know, yeah, that ideally you think okay, well maybe maybe they do need to roll those four guards out there, but like I mean, there's like questions are starting to grow with that group as well. Sure. Like you just don't and know now what you're going to get. Minifield could be available Saturday. I forgot all about him. What, you play him? <laughs> I don't know, man. Did he, he play? He got hurt in the Mississippi State game. He hasn't played since. Yeah. Did he play against Kentucky in that last game? I guess he probably did. I don't know. But, yeah, man, it's uh, it's going to be fascinating to see. And I guess the the final point that not, I'm – did not play. He did not play? Oh, yeah, that's right. He was he was coach's DMP that game. I remember Eric's uh, being asked about it. He said, yeah. coach's decision. Yes, sir, coach's so. decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, like we're we're kind of rolling through this, and here we are again talking about 10, 11 guys. Yeah. And what are they going to do with them? And it's just the story of the season, man. Um, yeah. There are just no clear answers to this rotation, and the only time it happened was when it was force fed to you because three guys were hurt. Yeah. So. Here I wonder we go. if the, does that make you go less hard in the portal? Like you've got to go get guys. But I just I don't know how you I don't know what you do moving forward because yeah it's it's, it's great to like stockpile talent mm -hmm. but all that talent wants to play Eric doesn't like to play ten eleven guys but there are ten or eleven guys that like if they're if they're right like can help you I just don't I don't I don't know man. yeah I I think it's almost like a you know that game where they give you like 15 bucks to spend and like you got to create a lineup and every player costs a different amount of money or yeah. whatever. It's almost like that. Like you have to really prioritize um, like how you're going to use that NIL, like whatever your pot looks like. And I think I'm with you um, from a standpoint of like you have to go out and get your dudes and then you got to be really strategic about how you fill out the rest of your roster with complimentary with guys. complimentary with the Chandler Lawson's sure of the world like you need you need a handful of those guys who can step in and provide you value yeah uh, but the biggest thing is too but you can't freaking miss on so many guys this year mm -hmm. um, because they missed on L and they missed on well I mean to a degree Caleb Battle uh, who you know has been up and down all season, right. and now he's just figuring it out. And Davenport hasn't been what you thought he would be, and you know, it, you just kind of go on and on and on down the list, and then you wind up in a situation where you're looking down there and you're going, well, you know, what are we gonna do? Minifield wasn't available for half Minifield the, wasn't well, available like almost half the season, and right. now he's back and injured, and even if he's healthy, don't know if you're gonna play him. Right, it's tough. So I don't know, man. It, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a wild off season, which is probably a perfect segue because we do need to to update the transfer portal big board. And yeah, man. I mean, they they've got their work just absolutely cut out for them. And you know, we've we've been uh, kind of giving them a head start on it if they've been paying attention, yeah. <laughs> you know, here. But we've made some tweaks, man. Uh, we've removed a body from the board. Is that is that correct? That is correct. I sent you a, a video yeah. of me taking said person off the off the big board. Yeah, Chris Moore is off the board uh, from Auburn. Just uh, nothing, just, nothing personal. Yeah, just not doesn't doesn't. Uh, it's just look. Okay, Arkansas fans, would you rather have Chris Moore or Vin Allen Lubin <laughs> on your roster? Remember the kid that went for 19, 12, and two blocks the other night? Yeah. Like against against Arkansas? That guy? Yeah. He's gone from not on the board to like hey, damn he's, near at the top of it. Well, he is at the top of it, actually, in, right behind I you. I flipped the board around from where it has been the last few episodes. Yeah. He's in the number one spot. Not saying that he's like number one because I, right. like that's in my heart. It's JP Pegues is there. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, Trezarian White might be. Might be right there if we're talking about forwards. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I put Ben Allen Lubin on the board this morning. Arkansas um, had nothing for him, man. Nothing at all. And this was a guy that a couple of weeks ago, our guy Kingsley, who we met in the in the suite in Arlington last weekend, he threw that name out there to us, and I was like, "Look, 
I'm kind of leery, Curtis, about putting another Vandy guy on the board because now we've got two. Tyron Lawrence is on the other side of the board. And he solidified himself. He did. By giving Arkansas 20. Yeah. I would did, I don't want to put Ezra Manjohn on there as, as much as you know he gave Arkansas fits. But yeah, yeah. Lubin is really talented. He's 6'8", 230. Like I mentioned, 19-12 and two blocks against Arkansas the other night. He's top 25 in offensive and defensive rebound rate in SEC play. And I believe he's like top 15 in offensive rebound rate. Um, four and a half percent block percentage uh, in the league. That's 11th. 25 points in their win, in Vandy's win over Texas A&M. And then he had 17 and 12 against Auburn. Uh, That'll play, man. Also. So uh, Auburn's a pretty good defensive team. Janai Brooms, pretty good player. Um, I would imagine Jalen Williams was playing in that game for Auburn, too. So he has 17 and 12 on that team. is pretty good. Yeah. Um, and I looked at hoop math. And Lubin is uh, shooting almost 72% at the rim on nearly 100 attempts this year. So, Dude, I love, love the way he plays. Like He yeah. is the type of active big that Arkansas needs. Like yeah. He's the type of active big that you thought Trevin Brazil would be, just in terms of how he moves. But sometimes it feels like TB is long and wiry and athletic, but he, he moves almost in slow motion. Mm -hmm. Everything that Lubin does feels fast forwarded. Like right. um, when he's crashing the boards from the perimeter, like he was just running around Makai and and Claw and those guys to get to the glass. Uh, I mean, he slipped right through Davenport and L there at the end for that right. offensive rebound, he's finishing above the rim and stuff. Like he's got a little bit of a little bit of shit to him, you know, as yeah. he was uh, mixing it up with. Um, oh, early in the game. Early right? in the game, yeah, with KB. Yeah, KB yeah. and then Devo, Devo and then and Davenport, like literally everybody. Who yeah, was just he didn't like, back down from that. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, uh, yeah, I liked him a lot, man. He, he was just, uh, I think he'd be a really good system fit. Yeah, for agreed. what for what Arkansas needs, and, and boy, they need a lot in the yeah. front court. So. And I left the uh, the build part open for suggestion. So if anybody's got anything, yeah, throw it at us. He's us he's good enough to wear. Uh, we need to really consider it and give them an appropriate build. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not just going to, like I did with, uh, there's one guy on the on the board where he was like a certain height, like he was, may have been, uh, may have been Tyron Lawrence, mm -hmm. maybe not, but I just went back and looked through Arkansas's past rosters until I found a guy who had the exact <laughs> height and weight as a guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm tr trying to put a little bit more effort into living <laughs> here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, well, no, that's a, I think that's a no brainer um, addition. He's a worthy, a worthy piece to the puzzle here on the board. Uh, and I was doing, I was doing some looking around the last couple of days because I feel like the, you know, we need to expand things a little bit. Um, and I got to thinking about the summit league and reason being like, it's a league that Arkansas has recruited in the past. Obviously Stanley Mude yeah. rings a bell. Um, and then they, you know, they pursued Grant Nelson very hard out of the portal. Uh, so they like the Summit League. You look at the coaching staff uh, with Todd Lee, with Caleb Klein. There's a lot of Summit League flavor in sure. there. And they play teams out of the Summit League fairly regularly. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go perusing through and, and see what I can find from this league because I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if they take a look at some guys. And I stumbled across a, a player that Arkansas saw last year in Bud Walton Arena from South Dakota State, uh, Zeke Mayo. Okay. And he really jumped off the page at me um, as a guy who kind of fits the mold. He's a junior over there. He's a big point guard, 6'4", 185. That, that's good size. Uh, and he's really, really blown up this season, man. Wow. This, this is a dude who is averaging 19.3 points per game, 5.9 rebounds, 3.6 assists. Uh, turnovers a little bit high this year, 3.3. 3. I, I think he's probably a guy who's a very high usage player, got the rock in his hands a ton. Uh, but the other thing that really stands out to me about him is he's over 100 assists already on the year, but he has made 77 three-pointers, made 77 threes uh, at 37%. That is, that's letting it fly and that's high efficiency. That's crazy. From three. I really, really like that. And he's averaging over a steal per game as well. So uh, big point guard uh, who can create, who can knock down threes, uh, getting it done on both ends of the floor. He rebounds. Uh, this is this is my kind of guy. And looking back, because I couldn't really remember 
how he did against Arkansas. But going back to that game where the Hogs played them last year, right before they went to uh, to Maui, um, he had he went four of eight from the field. Uh, he had nine points and eight boards in that game. So nearly a double double from the uh, from the lead guard position. Wow. So you yeah. know, so you saying that he's made all these threes this year made me think what Arkansas has done from three. Mm -hmm. uh, Caleb Battle leads the team with thirty two. Wow. That's uh so this that, kid that's is, crazy. Like you as you like to say, <laughs> he's letting it eat. Letting it eat, baby. Zeke Mayo <laughs> lets it eat. Arkansas, like I just can't believe this team is as ineffective from deep as it is. They're coming off back to back games where they made 10 three pointers and it doesn't feel like they did, <laughs> have accomplished anything. No. Like they haven't made a dent in uh in their percentage. <laughs> like Yeah. Arkansas. And it was very hollow 10 three pointers against Vanderbilt. Too. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. It def I felt that too. Uh, Arkansas's opponents have made 44 more threes than it has this year. Yes. So get, please, Zeke, Mr. Mr. Mayo, I'll yeah. roll out the red card. What a name, for you. too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm like always that. I'm always down for a good name, and uh, I don't think you can have too many Jackrabbits. So Absolutely not. Yeah, get him in there. We watched him play in Buffalo. We did, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Against Providence. That's right. Were we sitting up in the hockey press box eating a meatball sub? We were. That's exactly what we were doing <laughs> when that happened. Good <laughs> yeah. times, brother. And at Take the time, we were watching that. Baylor Shireman going, boy, he'd yeah. be a nice Razorback. Yeah, no joke. And, uh, yeah, and now he's killing it at Creighton. That would have been a cool piece to have. But we don't need to go down that road. Yeah. What a cool team that was. Yeah, that was an awesome team, South man. South Dakota State. Yeah, that was a fun group, dude. And uh, I think everybody... You know, every year you've got that twelve versus five where you're like, Oh, this is this is the guaranteed upset. A lot of people were looking at that South Dakota State team saying, Oh yeah, sweet sixteen, man. These dudes are for real. And uh Providence just clipped them, but yeah, that was a that was a fun group and he was a part of a true freshman that year. Yeah, for sure. I've got uh I've got another name. Okay. I might go back to early non con with Arkansas. Okay. To Gardner Webb. Uh people I'm sure want like clamoring for like a true point guard um let me talk you into julian sumaro 5'11 175 pounds he's a junior at gardner webb this year uh when arkansas played gardner webb earlier this season he went for 15 points two boards three assists zero turnovers two steals in 24 minutes the next time he played he uh he played baylor 27 minutes, scored 16 points, had a rebound, a couple of assists, turned the ball over a few times, had a steal there. Um, he's just – he's he's solid. I don't I don't exactly know what to make sometimes of these kids from a school like Gardner-Webb because, mm -hmm. like, their last game was against Longwood. They play schools like USC Upstate sure. and Presbyterian and High Point, whatever. That's not a slam on those schools. I'm just like – I kind of have some pause whether I want to open my mouth about this kid. Um but I kind of, I kind of like him. Hey, a little bit, and maybe it's just like a, maybe he's your, maybe he's a backup if, if there you go. if somebody, if somebody falls through. Yeah. But I'm looking at his Ken Palm page. Like the other thing is like some of these stats on the Ken Palm page are deceiving because they only count them with, for when they're playing Division One schools. Mm. And Gardner Webb has played several non D ones this sure. year, so they're a little bit. They're a little bit skewed, but against D1 schools, 37% from three, assist rate about 18.7%, pretty good at drawing fouls, um, and he's just, he's from the Bronx. I, I like, I feel like a kid from the Bronx is going to be tough as nails you need for that, you, play you need a that, little bit bigger than your size. That New York attitude. Yeah. I like Shout that. out Kamani Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not dropping time. Go get you a kid from the Bronx. Exactly. And, and hell, maybe you add something like that to, uh, you know, who who freaking knows? Like, I don't, I don't necessarily expect Caleb Battle back next year, but he has a year. You add that to the Jersey boy attitude, that could be kind of fun. I do like that. Yeah. Guys, they need some stuff to him. So, yeah. you know. I've enjoyed seeing the Jersey come out of KB lately. Me too, man. Yeah. So I'm all, I'm all for that Northeast attitude. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm a prisoner of the moment with that. Like the last yeah. two games out of KB, well, honestly, like the last three or four games out of KB has really 
kind of turned me to like, oh, he's got another year. Like maybe he's figuring it out late, and boy, he could be a like one of the better guards in the league next year. If, yeah, no doubt. If you were able to get him back, so who knows what that'll look like? I got an addition here, and this is a little bit out of nowhere, but Scotty, I found myself Wednesday night, uh, couldn't sleep, so I got up, I just turned on the TV, and you it was couldn't just sleep Wednesday after I dropped you off at your house at three. No, no. Well, that was Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, it was like Wednesday morning. Okay. You get it. Yeah. Long. But week. see, we went to Lucky Luke's. <laughs> right. Uh, Wednesday after work. And I got back home, fell asleep like right away, woke up, couldn't get back to sleep. I was like, man, I'm just going to get up, you know. And so I'm, I'm watching TV, flipping through some channels, and I just happened across a replay of Louisiana Tech at Western Kentucky. Okay. And I was like, all right. And so I'm watching this game. <laughs> I'm going to guess that was on CBS Sports Network. I think that's right, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. It was either that or like FS3 or, like, yeah. you know. FS3. But I'm watching this game. And it was pretty competitive. It was high scoring. I think Louisiana Tech won on the road like 90. I think they scored 90 points. Anyway, wow. this dude for Louisiana Tech, I keep watching him. His name's Isaiah Crawford. And every time I look up, he's making a play. Whether it's coming up with a steal or grabbing a big board or knocking down a shot or drawing a foul. Like he's just, he's got his prints all over the game. Yeah. And he finishes with 20 and seven. Uh, and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go look at this dude and see what he's all about because I love him. Like he was giving me a combination of like, he was giving me Trey Wade vibes, honestly, like the way he looked, he's six, six, 220 pounds, but he's like a power forward type of guy. Okay. He's a dude that, you know, you would, you'd even play him at the five if you needed to, but you can play him at the three. He's that guy. Right. So he kind of fits all the criteria. Uh, and I got to looking at him and here's what I love about him. First of all, he's a Fort Worth, Texas kid. So, you know regional guy sure right he is a he's 24 years old and he's a fifth year senior but he's got the COVID year and then the year after that he had a medical hardship okay so he's got a year left if he wants to so he could be a six-year guy who's 24 25 years old um that's you know man he's an adult male yeah. okay <laughs> like he's he's a grown man he's averaging 16.4 points 5.9 rebounds uh, and 2.4 assists per game for Louisiana Tech. And then another guy who, on not as many attempts, but given the position that you would play him at, kind of that 3-4 type of swing man, he's shooting 40% from three. Uh, you talked about Arkansas's leading three-point makes guy being KB at 32. Well, this dude's made 36 Mercy. on the year. He's got to the free throw line 148 times. He's shooting at 73% from there. Um, and then, so, you know, they've played in 29 games this season. And he is, again, kind of a, 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 a swing man, a versatile piece defensively. He's got 62 steals and 50 blocks. My gosh, dude, I'm year. looking at his block and steal percentage. 5.6% block rate, 3.5% steal rate. That's crazy. I love this kid. I absolutely love this at guy. At 6'6", six, six, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah Crawford, welcome to the board. Uh, have no idea if if he's going to be looking to to dip or whatever, or if he's going to try to go play pro, or if he's going to try to get a job at H and R Block. Like I, I mean, he's <laughs> he's damn near our age, but listen, yeah. he's got a year left, and so if he hits the portal, remember that name because that dude is he's a perfect fit yeah. for what Arkansas does, and you're looking for toughness and guys who are going to compete defensively, space the floor. Positional versatility, boom, 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 check, check, check. He's like the guy. That. Yeah, he was Conference USA preseason player of the year. I did not know that. This year, yeah. That, I but looking, I love lo it. Looking at his bio. Um, <laughs> yeah. And he's a kid, like, uh, you know, they Louisiana Tech in the background, like you've got his, you know, typical, his headshot, and then they've got like a rotating set of pictures mm -hmm. back behind him. He's a goggle guy. He is a goggle guy. Yeah. So in his, uh, in his goggles. ESPN profile pick he's got the goggles on but he's wearing like a polo shirt not a uniform you know it's like he just he just wears those things man oh love it yeah absolutely love yeah, it yeah sign me up for this kid i think i'm in love already yeah there we go so uh he's 100 percent gonna be on the board and then damn scotty like arkansas is already reaching out to transfers yeah uh, and we didn't talk about this last week because we were traveling but uh kind of a you know how it is like arkansas will reach out to a thousand guys they're serious about 20 of them um, but Caleb Williams, who is a division three transfer out of, out of, uh, McAllister college. It's interesting. You look at him, he's six, two, 
junior guard. Um, you probably think, ah, oh, whatever, like a guy hit the portal, you know, Rude will probably send him a text message or, you know, whatever. But this dude is uh, – he's kind of a bucket man, and he had a laundry list of high major schools who he were uh, reaching out to him right away. Yeah, for sure. And he – uh was he? He went for forty in an exhibition against Minnesota. Forty-one on Minnesota. And, yeah, Cam Christie in Minnesota. Yeah. So, so you um, know, and that's that's actually that's really tough to do when you're clearly you know like you don't have a lot of talent around you. It's a yeah. Division three school. It's a non-scholarship situation. Uh, and so when you're the guy, like to put up that kind of production is impressive. And then I you know I went and looked at his uh, his page on the website with his stats, and you look at some of his scoring nights. You know, he started the year 22, 25, 20. Uh, he had 51 on Concordia, something. I don't know who it is, but he was 20 or 28 from the field. Wow. <laughs> and he had 51 points on this team. Uh, has a pair of 31 point games, has a 34 point game. Like this dude, he's a bucket, man. So, you know, I actually did a little bit of reading about him. And was was perusing through some uh like some message boards and stuff. And it sounds like uh, some of those schools in the Big Ten, like Wisconsin, they're like very serious about it. Oh yeah, that's a fit. Yeah, and yeah, so he's fr- I think he's he's from Wisconsin, so that there that you makes, go. That makes total sense. Yeah. yeah, and so he will probably. My guess would be he winds up somewhere up there, but you know, yeah. um, if it was just a random guy that that Arkansas reached out to, we probably wouldn't bring him up. But given the fact that he forty piece Minnesota and he's yeah. got all these schools after him, it's like ah oh, maybe Caleb Williams. Yeah. Uh, spelled like the quarterback, as you yeah. told me, is uh, is a guy to keep you know just just have on the radar. You never know. Yeah, uh, he might be a more offensively gifted Braden Smith for Purdue next year. Ooh, there you go. I like that a lot. Is I mean they're what Edie Edie's gone after this year, right? Surely I would man. I like would we're think trying so. to find a place for this kid to land, and I would brought up a non Arkansas school, but I mean I just <laughs> I think. I think this one's probably going to wind up being a regional land. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no no hurt in reaching out. Like, if you can put the ball in the hole, you can put the ball in the hole anywhere. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. I would imagine, like, if you're 6'2 and you're getting buckets like that, you got some, like, you, you got some stuff to you, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, and um, crafty, I would imagine. Yep. You got a strap on him. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, cool. All right. Um, did you have anybody else? Those are my guys. No, those were my guys. Okay. And uh, Chris Moore Lubin. out of here. Then Alan Lubin, then Alan top Lubin's of the board up there. Tyron Lawrence solidified. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Things are looking good. Things are looking good. And we are going to um, over the weekend. Maybe I'll do that Sunday. Uh, update all the stats, like we said. Uh, yeah, I so did that. I did that this last. I think I did that. I think I said in the story I was going to update them every Monday. I did it this Tuesday. Good. So, okay. yeah, we'll, oh, awesome. yeah, we'll do it soon. Cool. Yep. And we'll keep that uh, keep that updated. We'll keep it posted. We'll continue to make tweaks, and we'll keep you guys filled in on what we do. Because, listen, just because you just because you get on the board doesn't mean you get to stay there. We take this stuff seriously. So if you're not yeah. producing, uh, if you're not meeting the criteria, you're, you're freaking out of there. We're taking you <laughs> off. All right? Uh, and if, if you catch, you know, you're on the radar or one of the, you know, fans of the pot at the palace, Gives us a name and we like it and we verify their game. Uh, they're going on there. Okay, For so sure. this is a fluid process. And shoot, man, we're like two, maybe three weeks away from, uh, you know, just having that in the background and, and creating a real board. For uh, sure. And hopefully, we're just taking guys off of our projected list here and putting them on the actual one, and then we'll look really smart and cool, and For sure. everybody will think we know ball. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would be good to. If people thought we did. Yes, yeah, that's exactly yeah, right. Stick with us because it's, fingers crossed, it's going to get better. Yes, yeah. It's going to get better. And like you've mentioned before, potential for a wild off season is, uh, is definitely there. Mm-hmm. And good, bad, ugly, we're going we gonna to do this pod. That's right. The show must go on. Yes, there says. we go. <laughs> there we go. All right, brother. Well, um, any final thoughts before we get out of here on transfers or Arkansas, Kentucky, or Eric Musselman, or the manager games? That manager team's going to Phoenix, buddy. They're going to Phoenix, dude. Top four teams go to the actual Final Four yeah, and play in the some, manager title some, games. Some big games coming up, I would yep. imagine. But Just knocked off number four, Vanderbilt. Yeah. They were sitting at Arkansas was sitting at six, so chances are they'll flip flop them. 
And uh, I checked in on it because they played Kentucky when college game day was here. Kentucky's undefeated number one in the manager team rankings. Uh, Arkansas lost that game by six. So the actual team. Uh, and so I, I sent out some feelers and said, hey, is, is the rematch happening Friday night before you guys play in Rupp? Uh, and it's in negotiations. In the go- really? Because you gotta ha- you, like you gotta have the uh, the space, right? So whether it's in Rupp or in a practice facility, that's right. And uh, you know, can you get an official down there or whatever? Because it's you know, yeah, just throwing these that's things together. I hadn't even considered like who officiates those games, <laughs> right? So yeah, so it's like I guess it's you know, maybe local high school guys or something. Maybe they so. probably pay them pretty well. So, and it's twenty minute running halves, by the way. Ooh. Running clock halves, uh, and it's not just managers. Uh, like it can be anybody on a on a basketball staff. And so, like Musk could play if he wanted to, uh, but you could also have like <laughs> if there's like the academic coordinator for basketball, that person could play. Strength coach could wow. play. Okay, Matt Townsend could play. Could the Roddy athletic Brew trainer, play? Brew could play if he wanted to. Ooh, yeah. So you know, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. You might be it might be a late season addition to throw off the throws off the the rotation a little bit, dude. So. I would I would uh yeah. Just let Tony Hall keep keep running it up. Tony Hall is getting buckets, man. The only thing that I had to add was, um, I was trying to come up with like a feel good Friday thing. For, oh yeah, for Arkansas Kentucky, and I just immediately went to J D Note's 30, 30 points eight yes. assists game. That was just. It was phenomenal. And Curtis, like, really what stuck out in that game was the continuity with who was on the floor mm-hmm. throughout, the, like, the entire highlight video. It's JD, Jalen Williams, Stan, um, Audis, Tony, and either Kamani Johnson or Trey Wade. Yep. It's a beautiful thing, That's man. It. The whole, like, the whole time I'm watching this highlight video, I'm like, I see, like, two different people, mm-hmm. like, every now and then. Two moments I'll never forget from that game. J.D. Note turning the corner on a ball screen and getting his first dunk of the year. And yeah. J.D. Note blocking that corner three late in the game. Yeah. Who was that dude? Who was that shooter uh, that they got from, like, Davidson or wherever it was? He was just a knockdown shooter. Oh, it was uh, Kellen Grady? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. J.D. wasn't having it. No. God, I missed that And then dude. right after that, Aldis Tony blocked one out of bounds, yep. I think. Yep. And then saved it. Arkansas got possession and got fouled. That was a wrap. God. Yeah. What a game. Yeah. And I remember Jalen Williams was in his bag too. Like he was going at Oscar Shibway, scoring in like three or four different kinds of ways. Like he was uh he was on one. And then it's just kind of fun to look back at what Stan was doing mm-hmm. when he was here. And like he's catching mid post. A little shoulder fake that way, spin this way, pro is pro fadeaway, dude. Yeah, like saw it then. I was just so happy for him that he's doing it in the league now. Because you got contract, you could, baby. You could see it then. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, just a, he's a pro. Um, it was just fun to watch Kamani Johnson mix it up too. Trey <laughs> Wade just do his job. Like, I miss it when I just miss JD Note. I think I do too. more than more than anything. Trey was Wade a was a professional hooper. job doer. Yeah, absolutely. He's, yeah, I mean Trey Wade's. In his next to last game at Arkansas, locked up the soon to be NBA Rookie of the Year. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I think there was a tweet that came out the other day that Chet Holmgren got to a thousand points faster than anybody in Thunder history, and he did it five games sooner than Russell Westbrook did. Wow! But he wow. he hardly did anything on 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 Unk. So yeah, Unk got them clamps. Shout out to Unk. <laughs> That's I a perfect that way to get so out of here, much, dude. I do too. I do. But we'll watch. Uh, We'll watch this one again. It's like in on my feel, it's like in my feels Friday instead of yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, again, like Scotty said, keep rocking with us. We appreciate everybody as as always for tuning in. Uh, make sure that you're uh, tapped in over at NattyStateSports.com. We got a lot of written content that's been coming out. We've been ramping that up, uh, doing some spring football preview stuff. Uh, just keep an eye out on that YouTube page at Natty State Sports. Uh, a lot going on. Where's the pot at the palace? Uh, we got the John Neighbor show. He just had a really cool interview with Dusty Hannah's that I think yeah. you guys would be really, really interested in. We got the Boss Hog podcast with Josh Braun, those offensive linemen firing up here uh, probably early next week, I would imagine. And, and we're getting a football podcast started uh, where we kind of analyze what we're seeing at spring practices. And then uh, hop over to the new Bombastic podcast YouTube page. Make sure you're subscribed over there. Andrew Ellis got you covered with all the baseball deets. 
as they get ready for a big weekend series against a Murray State team that's apparently pretty good. So a lot going on. Tap in at 1230 tomorrow. Make sure you come find us on any of the social media channels uh, because we are going to be live streaming this basketball game. Then baseball is going to get rolling. It's going to be a good Saturday, great uh, weather in Fayetteville. And we're out of here. For Scotty Bordelon, it's been Curtis Wilkerson of United States Sports, and we will catch you guys Saturday for the live stream, Monday for the pot at the Palace.